To illustrate what genetic drift is, let's take a look at a very extreme example. Suppose that you've got an island that is so small that only a single shrub lives on it. And you can suppose that this shrub is one that can self-fertilize, like many plants can. Um, so that each generation it has a single offspring, which replaces it. Now let's say that originally this shrub was heterozygous at a particular locus. It had an A1 allele and an A2 allele. What will its offspring look like? Well, there's about a there's a 50% probability that the A1 allele will get passed into the egg cell that gives rise to the seed, and there's a 50% probability that the A1 allele will get passed into the pollen grain, which fathers the plant in the next generation. Put those together and you've got a 25% chance that the offspring or the population next generation will have a genotype of A1A1. Similarly, there's a one out of four chance that the next generation shrub will be A2A2, and there is a 50% chance that that shrub will be A1A2, that will be a heterozygote just like its parent. 50% of the time, one of the alleles on this island has gone extinct in a single generation. That's a dramatic change in allele frequency, and natural selection had nothing to do with it. <clears throat> As time goes on, even if this individual, this first generation offspring, turns out heterozygous, uh, the next generation, there's a 50% chance that one of the alleles will be lost, and the generation after that, there's a 50% chance that one of them will, will be lost, and so on. So that if enough time goes by, it's almost certain that one of the alleles or the other will be completely lost from the population. What's going on here? What we're going to be talking about in this lecture are a different sort of allele than what we were talking about in the lecture on natural selection. Um, last time we talked about what happened in a population when one allele uh, reliably has a higher fitness than the other. In other words, you've got three different genotypes, and on average, they tend to have different numbers of offspring. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about what happens when you've got two alleles in a population, and the fitness is exactly the same. So here's the scenario we're imagining. You've got A1A1 homozygotes, A2A2 homozygotes, and the heterozygotes, and they all, on average, have the exact same number of offspring. These are what are called neutral alleles. None of them has any fitness advantage over the other. Now, this is true on average. However, what happens when you get out into the real world is that the average doesn't quite happen. Luck is one of the things that affects how many offspring an individual has. And so, for example, in the wild, you can imagine there might be an A1A1 squirrel and an A2A2 squirrel. The A1A1 squirrel goes on and has three offspring, and the A2A2 doesn't. Now, this wasn't due to selection. It wasn't because the A2A2 A2, squirrel was slower or dumber than the A1A1 squirrel. It's just that it was unlucky. But because of luck, the gene pool has lost two A2 alleles. This is what genetic drift is. Genetic drift is an evolutionary mechanism. It changes allele frequencies over the generations. But it's not because of some advantage that one allele or the other has. It's just changes in allele frequency due to luck alone. One of the misconceptions that I often hear about evolution is that people think that evolution is just random chance. Well, genetic drift is random chance, but evolution by natural selection is not. Evolution by natural selection is very systematic. Genetic drift is when you start thinking about luck. I'm going to introduce a couple of different ways of visualizing the effects of drift on a population of alleles. And you'll be seeing these um, at various points during this lecture. One way that you can visualize the changes in a population of alleles over time 
is with a graph of allele frequency. And when you graph what's going on in a population due to drift, you can imagine the allele frequencies are going to wander or wobble a lot, more or less like this graph. Another way that you can visualize genetic drift is with what's called a coalescent graph. This is essentially a family tree of alleles starting at the present day, oddly, on the right, and going back into the past on the left. The coalescent graph may need a little bit more explanation. Here's the basic idea. Let's suppose we've got a population of five individuals. They're each diploid, so that's 10 alleles. Um, some of those 10 alleles will get passed on into a sperm cell or an egg cell that will get combined into an offspring of the next generation. But some of them won't. Some just won't be, they'll be passed on into an egg or a sperm that just never takes place and takes part in fertilization, or they'll be passed on into an offspring that doesn't survive. So even if the gene pool stays the same size, if the population stays the same size, some of them are not going to get passed on. And as this continues generation after generation, there's a pattern that starts to emerge. It's easiest to see if we use different colors to show the different lineages, the different genetic lineages, which are participating in this population. So let's show this, what happens to this diagram when you give each one of these 10 alleles a different color. Okay, again, some alleles pass on copies of the next generation, some pass on none. And after only a few generations, look what's happened. There are a number of these original lineages that have gone completely extinct. Four out of the ten, in fact, are completely gone. And as time goes on, more and more of them drop out. Until ultimately, what's going to happen is that a single ancestral allele will be the descendant of all the alleles at this particular time. Which of the alleles happens to be the descendant of the entire population at this endpoint is totally up to chance. It's not, again, that any one of these alleles had an advantage over the others. It's just that this allele was luckier than the rest. So that's the first thing I want you to know about genetic drift. Genetic drift removes genetic variation from a population. What happens is that each one of these alleles, each one of these colored lineages, can go extinct. But once extinct, it never comes back. It can't. It's gone. The second thing you should know about genetic drift is it, that it depends, the speed at which it happens depends on population size. And this is because it's a chance process. It's due to luck. And luck evens out over many trials. What do I mean by that? Well, um, that first example with the single shrub on the island, which allele gets passed on into the pollen grain uh, is something like, it's like flipping a coin. Heads, the pollen grain gets the A1 allele. Tails, it gets the A2 allele. It's the same way with the egg cell that forms the seed. It wouldn't be at all surprising for you to flip two coins and have them both come up heads or both come up tails. So in a really small population, a population with only two alleles, it's not at all surprising that you would immediately lose one of the alleles from that population. However, if you were to flip a coin hundreds and hundreds of times and have it turn up heads every time, that would be incredibly unlikely. In other words, with a larger population of alleles, it is not at all likely that you would lose all copies of one allele due to luck in a single generation. <clears throat> this is what it looks like when you graph uh, genetic drift for populations of different sizes. So for a population size where you've got 10 individuals, 20 alleles, the allele frequencies wander very sharply. They do wander randomly. But as soon as the allele frequency hits one or it hits zero, um, one of the alleles has gone to fixation. And it stays that way ever after that. And this happens pretty quickly. 
It may take 20 generations, it may take 60 generations, but pretty rapidly you're going to lose one allele or the other. Now if the population is larger, you have the same random wandering of the allele frequencies, but it's much less dramatic and the effective drift is much slower. Yes, the allele frequency changes over time, and yes, it can go extinct. One of the alleles can go extinct, but it's going to happen much less quick. So as I mentioned earlier, genetic drift and natural selection are two really different processes. And one of the reasons that they're different is because they deal with, they act on different alleles. Usually, if one allele has a selective advantage, if it makes organisms better at surviving or reproducing, the effect of natural selection will totally overwhelm the effect of drift. Okay, so if you're thinking about alleles that matter for fitness, you only usually need to worry about natural selection. On the other hand, if you're dealing with alleles that have no effect on fitness, if you're dealing with alleles that have the same fitness, usually you only have to deal with genetic drift. There can be a gray area, uh, particularly when populations are extremely small. Luck may affect the frequencies of alleles even if they are really different in terms of their ability to help organisms survive and reproduce. But in general, we're either going to be dealing with uh, alleles with different fitness and we'll only think about selection, or we're going to be dealing with neutral alleles, and we'll only think about drift. Okay, one more thing that I want to add about drift. Because it's random, if you were to basically rewind the tape of evolution and play it again over and over, you could very well see a different outcome each time. And so, for example, if you had five little islands, each of one of which has a single shrub on it, um, and all of those shrubs started out heterozygous, after, another, after one generation, a lot of those populations would have lost one allele or the other. After many generations, all of them would be down to one allele just due to dumb luck. But which allele varies randomly from one island to the next? Some islands, the population will be fixed for the A1 allele. On some islands, the population will be fixed for the A2 allele. So let's recap some of the things that we've learned about genetic drift. Genetic drift consists of random fluctuations in allele frequencies. It's totally different from selection. It tends to remove genetic variation from a population over time. And it does that more quickly in a small population. Population size really matters when you're thinking about genetic drift. Finally, genetic drift has a tendency to cause populations to get different from one another genetically. It causes them to diverge genetically.